everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Lily with San Antonio Water System, and this is Mark. Hi. <laughs> Mark and I are actually, we're, we're using my home today and my yard because I recently, um, you know, relatively recently took advantage of one of our water saver coupons, um, and I replaced my entire front lawn. I have no more grass. So we're gonna be talking to you about troubleshooting the uh, landscape, that particularly a new water saver landscape. Before we start talking, I am going to remind all of you to please swipe and share if you're on Periscope. Also on uh, Facebook, if you're watching our live feed on Facebook, you can actually hit the follow button so that you can get notifications whenever we do actually uh, go live. So we're normally here Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. Um, bringing you different topics related to conservation and gardening and how to make the most and work with the plants in the environment that we're in, which is hot South Texas weather. So um, In July. In July, July, specifically. Well, we try to be timely, but mm, yeah. this time we're talking to you about what yeah. to do with the hot South Texas weather in July. So, uh, Mark, let's take me through this uh, uh what did i do right and wrong in this yard and how do we fix it and maintain it well first thing you got rid of the grass yeah and that's important because grass uses a lot of water yeah. and so we're trying to be very drought tolerant very concerned about the environment about our, our water supplies and everything mm -hmm. so you did a fabulous job Good. and you did participate in our water saver coupons did you did not you did, did or did not? I did, and so some of the plants here are part of that coupon. Um, I chose to plant my plants much later than I probably should have, and it happened that it started to, we had all that great we rain. We had rain, wonderful rain, however. Right when I had just planted those new water saver plants, yeah. and so, so I lost about half of them. So some the of them were, were, were planted uh, in the shade and had a lot of extra water, so we're going to talk about that. First, my first okay. issue right now is, and I don't know if, if everyone can see it and take a picture real close on this. This is a chipped mulch, and we require mulch on all the beds mm -hmm. for the coupon. This is a chipped mulch. You see it's kind of squarish like this. This is perfect. Okay. I love this. <laughs> this is wonderful. And why? What's the uh, reason why we want chipped mulch? <laughs> Let me get to that. All uh, right, The chipped mulch is, it is light, fluffy. It allows a lot of water to go through and a lot of oxygen, and but yet it's going to be like a, uh, a a little sealant, and so it keeps everything in there. But we love how light and airy it is, and so this is a wonderful. This is a chipped hardwood. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain chipped materials that are great, but we don't recommend them for some environmental purposes. And that would be chipped bald cypress or chipped cypress. Okay. We don't like that because it gets into a lot of ancient growth. Mark, um, we have a, a oh, we have a question already. Oh. Wonderful. Someone asked, is that dirt around the tree and is that good for the ah, tree? We are going to get right to it. That's the next step. No, that is not dirt. That is a different type of mulch and I'm going to directly talk to that. Okay, so compared to the recommended chip one, mm -hmm. we have a shredded, sometimes it's a shredded cypress or a cedar, sometimes shredded. But you see how, look at this, because compared to this, is this light and airy? I can go like this, look at that. No, 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 no. It doesn't allow uh, the moisture and oxygen, particularly in the oxygen, to go in to the soil. So, we don't want this type of mulch and we don't want this type of mulch around the tree. We want to dig that out until we can find the flare root. And I'm still not finding the flare root. <laughs> and I'm still not yeah, finding the flare root. Was this tree and this mulch yeah. was given to me pretty much by uh, when I bought the house 10 years ago. And it's just been, I think we replaced the mulch yeah. a couple of times and it had a ring around the tree. We so. really don't want this type of mulch around the tree mm -hmm. because it, if it does get the moisture in there, and, and this is a little bit moist, mm -hmm. it's going to hold it in there. And it's going to be a perfect place for disease and other pests. And when I'm talking... Another talk question, a little off topic. Um, no. But how, how does one stop the squirrels from digging into your mulch? <laughs> um, you don't, probably. You know, uh, you use the right type of mulch. <laughs> um, you don't use the pecan shell mulch first and foremost, even though it's wonderful and lovely and aromatic. They love the pecan. 
shell mulch. So don't do that one. Use this type of mulch. So this type of mulch would keep mostly squirrels from digging into it, huh? Yes, and then the other thing is get a very excitable terrier. <laughs> they, that'll take care of all the squirrels. Uh, so and before this says another reason why I was talking about the root collar you can, and the root flare. You see this is kind of a bell-shaped on one side and it's kind of flaring out. We want to expose that so we can see all the flare. That's very, very important. So uh, what I'm, after the end of the day, before I leave here, I will take care of this all for you. <laughs> all right, so it's that's just, what it probably should look it should, like. I'm going to show you exactly what it okay, should like. Good. So uh, the next little thing we want to talk about here is the sizes. Now I mentioned that it's all, has to be a minimum of a gallon for the coupons, mm -hmm. but you went out and did some lovely plants right here. These are one of our recommended plants. This is Alvia Farinacea. You did a wonderful job on that <laughs> choice on that. You just traveled one of my. Uh, and, 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 uh, uh, okay, you're not in the union. You're not going to be out here anymore. Anywhere, anyway. But what you use is commonly what's called the four inch. Yeah. So a little pot about this size. Uh, if I can, about about this size is what you finally com find commonly in the store. This is not the one we recommend or require, but this is a great one. I recommend it. I like the smaller ones. The smaller ones are going to be growing up faster. It's going to take a shorter time to get uh, established. Okay. And we use a little term we like to say is first year it sleeps, second year it creeps, third year it leaps. So the only one thing you have to remember with these smaller ones is you have to provide constant watering. Okay, yep, and we've been watering them about every two days with the hose, spot watering them. So Just spot water, that's great. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. And in fact, there's a great, wise article talking about how you can water newly planted plants. On Garden Style SA. On Garden Style SA. Okay, and what would that be called? Um, I don't remember the title of that Three, article. Three, two, one. Oh, that's three, right. Two, the three, right. So the three, two, one. Three weeks. So for the first month, you're going to be watering three times three a week. Times, okay. So, so you're doing a really good job. Okay. And it's smart. It's a little bit of water. Yep. Perfect. All right. So these are great. Now wait. Right before we move away, since we're already down here, you can also see this lovely grass. Oh, this lovely I've grass. Let me just, uh, just just kill these. This is Bermuda grass. Okay. All right. So what we want to uh, everyone to do is use the liberal amounts of mulch. Particularly in May, particularly mm -hmm. in, in September. Mm -hmm. And when this does occur, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and use a very natural product. Uh, and I think we, we illustrated here on Periscope. Vinegar and orange oil? Vinegar and orange oil. Mm -hmm. And everyone can go back on Garden Style SA and look at that actual formulation, but it's two ounces per one gallon. So uh, you can do that, spray it on. And what we saw in, on our periscope about three or four weeks ago is it actually starts killing it right away within, within 15 minutes on that. So, but in order to discourage it, and you see how easy it pulled out? Mm -hmm. You pull that? You use mulch. Yeah. That's the key thing. Okay, perfect. All right. So now, uh-oh, what, 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 <laughs> what do we have here? What do we have here? What do we have here? So remember. So I this is Mexican that. heather. Remember I told you that a lot of my coupon plants actually did die because of the timing and the weather, etc. So what happened then is I had this bare spot. Actually, you see, this was Damanita that I did get. With oh, it's one of Mark's spot. favorite plants. And it is supposed to be um, a really um, drought tolerant. This is a very sunny spot, but I put it in the ground right as the After the, uh, let's happened. see, after the 200% <laughs> over historic in April exactly. and 300%. So then I had this really bare spot, and I went out and bought additional plants, and I bought this. Um, this is a Blackfoot Daisy. Daisy. Which does like it uh. here. I bought some Black Eyed Susans, which mm -hmm. I think I need to deadhead. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I bought some Mexican Heather, but it okay. doesn't look like the Mexican Heather like this. So yet. the Mexican Heather, or Kuthia, is an excellent plant. However, it prefers shade. Okay. And so That's as the sun... As the sun comes around at 12 o'clock, I happen to know when it's going to come around here, mm -hmm. it's going to get started to burn up, as you can see right yeah, here. Absolutely. So, uh, so I said is the right, <laughs> the right plant in the right place, and we have some wonderful plants here. You did a wonderful job. Thanks. But you always want to have the right plant in the right place. It's because I so, have good resources. I get to talk to you guys. All the time. I look at garden style. All the time. Uh, so we have the the Blackfoot Daisy, excellent plant, right in the hottest 
corner, you have cement here, cement here. You have a western sun over that way. It is going to be really, really hot. This is a perfect plant. So this might be a good option over here, too, huh? This would be. Well, let's just walk over here. Okay. So this is the okay. problem inferno strip. And, and you have here, we have some Ajax jasmine, mm -hmm. very commonly used. Uh, it's a great ground cover. The one thing is, it's maybe a little hot and sunny yes. for it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what you had your choice over here, the Blackfoot Daisy, that would be an excellent choice over here. Okay. But you always want to go to the right plant in the right place, so that's perfect. Uh, and we also have this lovely shrub right here. This is the Texas sage. Yep. And so I noticed from a kind of a design standpoint, <laughs> you have one close to the house, you have another one, you can have one right right here. And so that's really perfect and on it. to your piece of the right plant in the right spot, it's interesting because both the sage that's over there and the little... In that spot, and this and they bed. were planted at the right at the same time, mm -hmm. the same size. But you can see that one seems to be doing much better. It, it got established faster. It started growing quicker. Um, and this one is, is struggling. I mean, it is yeah. hanging in there, and I do think it's going to make it, but it's struggling a little bit more. And that's another great example is we have plumbago, which we talked about mm -hmm. yeah, two weeks or three weeks ago. So we have the plumbago. So, yeah. And the plumbago is a great, great plant. We talked about it. But you notice this one is just a tad bit growing a little bit more Way than the one in the one. shade. Yeah. So they like, plumbago is a great plant because it does well in sun or shade. Mm -hmm. It's just that this one is I'll growing get, a little bit And I'll get faster. more flowers in the sun than I will in the shade. Right. right? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And speaking of flowers. Oh, yeah. Now you want to talk to me about my flowers. Okay. Flower. So it is the middle of summer. And usually we, we prune everything, all the flowering shrubs in the in, uh, springtime, February, March. Okay. But we also do a light pruning light. in the uh, summertime. So, okay, look away. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't look away. Okay, I'm going to like cut it about a quarter of the way down, something like that. So just do it like this, like this. Like this. Will that encourage new growth? That is the exact reason why we're doing it. Okay. Then, so we're also deadheading a little bit here. Yeah. And then this we get. make my husband happy. He likes to trim plants. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, <laughs> and, and then I'm going to give this to him because <laughs> I know he likes to do that too. So the same thing with the, the Susan. That little pile for <laughs> JB to clear away. Yeah, we'll All right, so so uh, you don't have a lot of the flowering shrubs here, but uh, you can I do that. They died. <laughs> I had multiple ones of these, and they're all dead. <laughs> so uh, the flowering shrubs like salvias, the plumbagos, uh -huh. uh, the mist flowers. Not so much the mist flowers uh, right now, um, just because they're a little small. Mm -hmm. Still, but that's what you would do. So all the salvias, salvia, the plumbagos. The mist flowers, those are all beautiful plants to do. Uh, beautiful plants, they're in the right location, but yeah. you're going to have to trim them. Sure. You trim them twice a year. Now, look, think about that. Trimming them twice a year. Yeah, not a lot of work, for sure. A lot quicker than cutting my grass. Right. So now, I, I did the one, I had some additional trees, okay? Obviously, mm -hmm. this is a lot more than the coupon space. And right, so right. I had other plants that I put in here. And so um, I have a lemon Meyer tree that I've actually had for like over 10 years uh -huh. it was in a pot and uh -huh. it was not happy in that pot. It mm -hmm. was too small. I had trans transplanted it twice already and it was still just not happy. So I finally decided to put it in the ground and it seems very happy in the spot I put it yes, in. Yes, it does. It, it's great. It's a great, wonderful pot. Any other advice on caring for trees versus the shrubs? No, it's the same I, kind of principle. Lots of little waterings initially mm -hmm. and then gradually changing to infrequent deep okay. so it depends on the plant on what is termed infrequent okay. some of these shrubby plants need to be watered once a week mm -hmm. or once every other week mm -hmm. on the trees once they get established you know you talk about twice a month at the most okay. so Perfect. so that's that's the wonderful thing but you did bring up one thing 
you have a lot of open spaces. Mm -hmm. And you have plants and you added plants. If I can remind anybody talking about low water use plants, uh, landscapes, I want to remind everybody that it's just wonderful because you have the opportunity to keep changing or adding. And the only rules you have to know is right plant, <laughs> no, right plant for the right place. Mm -hmm. And small ones go in the front, big ones go in the back. And you can find all that information at GardenStyleSanAntonio.com or GardenStyleSA.com. So that's, that's really it. It's very short. It's very sweet. Make sure you use mulch. Use the right mulch. Use the right size plant. What's the right mulch? And the right mulch, again, is a chipped hardwood or chipped pine bark. Uh, use the right plant in the right place. And then use maintenance at, uh, at the appropriate time of the year. Perfect. Do we have any other questions? All right. No. No. We're no. Good. Come on, question people out there. <laughs> I'm sure we covered it all. We hope you enjoyed learning from some of my mistakes. I've actually really enjoyed the process. It's been relatively easy maintenance, and so we will um, hopefully bring you that kind of information. Mm -hmm. And you I was going to say that the, the thing is, it's not mistakes. Well, true. They're but only opportunities. opportunities. They're they're never mistakes. <laughs> and when we have a type of uh, yard like this, it's, uh, you have lots of opportunities. Thank you. There are no mistakes. Thank you so much. All right, guys. We'll hope uh, we see you next Thursday at 1030. Bye-bye.